Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we have the brand spanking new Tier 10 Italian Battleship import to review for you guys. But, before we get there, there's something that I have to address. So, on Tuesday's video, the Don't Be That Guy video, I featured some players with a little bit of a toxicity problem. However, in that video, I did ask that you guys leave them alone. Because, again, we all have those bad nights and stuff, and the point of the Don't Be That Guy series is to show you what it's like when you are that guy and are just going off and chatter, acting toxic in the game, and, again, how not to be that guy. And most of you guys, like 99% of y'all, have done just that, left them alone, and not returned their toxicity with more toxicity. However, some have, unfortunately, taken to harassing some of the people in the video against my very wishes and I'm again asking that you leave them alone because the point of the don't be that guy series is to not be that guy and harassing somebody for a match that they had where they either weren't thinking straight or again were just having a bad night is arguably worse than the way that they were behaving in that game so please if you are one of those people Knock it off. Leave them alone. Thank you. Alright, to the Columbo now. So, I am going to go ahead and switch ports because I would very much like to see this ship. It seems like they really just said, you know what the Hamburg port needs? More smoke. So we're going to switch it to a more appropriate ship for this Italian battleship. Now, I have acquired some of the other new ships that have been added in in this patch. Um, I got very lucky and in the very first bundle of the German destroyers I managed to nab the uh, where is she at now oh, she be the German with the Germans duh I managed to nab the that's my discord not yours I managed to nab the Felix Schultz where are you at Felix Schultz where is she am I oh right there geez yep there she is, so a video on this one might be out fairly soon as well. Now, I haven't managed to acquire the uh, ZF6 yet, Have, haven't broken the old wallet out for that yet. Uh, Maximilian, I will have her probably very soon after getting the, uh, the ZF6. Of course, you, you know, I'm not going to get 200,000 coal through the ZF6, but it won't be too long before I have enough coal again to go over the Maximilian. So be on the lookout for that review as well. But anyway, back to the Columbo after I mute my Discord. Alright, so the Columbo, she's finally in game, and yes, your eyes do not... Dis this is such... so much better lighting than the Hamburg port. Oh god, these Italian battleships are really pretty. But yes, as you can see, she does have 16 guns! The highest number of, of main battery guns for tier 10 for a battleship. Now, of course, these are 15-inch guns, but when you got 16 of them with sap, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we are going to go ahead and go over her. No captain skills are applied. Well, there is no captain on her at all right now, and no modules have been equipped either. So let's go ahead and look at her stats. So, first off, her armor. So we got a 32 millimeter belt with a 60 millimeter icebreaker bow for those icebergs in the Mediterranean. A 70 millimeter upper belt with 150 millimeter casemates for the uh, secondary guns right there. So that's an interesting aspect of her armor. All right, and then a 30, 375 millimeter main belt with 38 millimeters of torpedo protection. Now, I wish that 38 millimeters extended. Well, actually, this is 70, so that's a nice middle finger to IFHE. Um, with 32 millimeter stern, 32 millimeter deck in the front, she's got 32 millimeter, mil millimeter deck as well, and 50 millimeter main deck. So again, some more middle fingers there to HE. And let's see where her citadel lies. I do believe it is. Oh wow. It is. Did I miss that? I did miss that. <laughs> All right, there's her citadel. It is below the waterline and kind of turtleback. Some very, 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 very small slopes there. Uh, very much unlike the Lepanto, who, as you can see there, that's a much bigger portion to hit there. 
but on the Colombo, it's a little bit lower and those slopes aren't as pronounced. So yeah, if you do hit it with Battleship AP on that slip, you will Citadel it, but good luck getting that to connect. I mean, there are battleships accurate enough that can do it if you can aim right, but aiming right is going to be a challenge, especially when she's moving. So we'll see how that works. And again, it is just below the waterline right there. All right. So, whoops. Let's look at her survivability. She has 89,900 hit points with a 31% torpedo damage reduction rate, which is very lovely. Uh, her main battery guns, 16 15-inch guns with a 38-second reload time and a 40-second 180 time. So, not the quickest turrets. Definitely not the slowest, however, but a long load time. We'll see how, how low we can get that with modules and such. Uh, her sap shells can pin 96 millimeters of armor, just like the other 15-inch sap shells. And she has 12,500 maximum sap damage. And the Lapata, I believe it's the same. Yep, 12,500. But it looks like the AP also got a little bit of boost because her AP also does... No, her AP still does 12,000. Okay, I thought it said 12,500. I thought it said 12,500. So, literally the same shells as the Lepanto. And she has a maximum range of 18.9 kilometers and a ma maximum, I'm sorry, initial AP shell velocity of 8, 850 meters a second and initial sap shell velocity of 880 meters a second. Secondary guns, she still has lots of those 90 millimeter guns, just like the Lepanto, and they can only pin 15 millimeters of armor. So, beyond starting a fire, not that useful. If they do reload in 4 seconds, have a 5% chance of starting a fire, and have a maximum firing range base of 7.3 kilometers. She does, however, have more of the 152s, which are much more useful than the 90s, and they have a reload time of 8 seconds, 7% chance of starting a fire, maximum HE shell damage of 2100, and an initial velocity of 950 meters a second. They are really freaking flying out of there. And do also have a maximum range of 7.3 kilometers. And her base firing range is 18.9 kilometers, if I forgot to go over that. AA, I mean, from what I've seen with the Lepanto, she does have an A rating of 83. It's not enough to, of course, stand up by yourself against a CV, but if you go with some other ships, it's okay. However, it is rather short range. Yeah, 4.6 kilometer A range. So it's okay when CVs get in it, but they don't get in it, obviously, far away as other BBs, and they don't spend a lot of time in it either. So not the best AA. So she has a maximum speed of 29.6 knots with the new uh, Swift and Silent skill. That'll go up. Turning stoker race at 960 meters and a rotor shift time of 18 seconds. Concealment, she has a base concealment range of 17.3 kilometers. Dang, that's one kilometer-ish away from her maximum firing range. And she's detectable by air from 15.2 kilometers away. And for her equipment, of course, she gets repair party, exhaust smoke, and spotter or fire. And uh, this is the thing with the Italians. Spotting will give you more range, which is, of course, good. But fodder is also more useful against CVs because your AA is very short range. So it's a bit of a toss-up of what you want to equip there. I've been keeping the spotter equipped on the Lepanto, and that's been working out quite well. Alright, so that's all of her stats without any commander skills or modules applied. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go ahead and module her out and switch the commander over to her, and we shall see what she's like after that. Alright T. So for the modules, I went with basically a standard battleship build. So I'm with main armaments mod 1 to keep the turrets in the fight, damage con 1 because fires suck, aiming systems mod 1 because the ship's dispersion sucks, uh, damage con 2 because fires still suck, concealment because concealment for Italians is optimum, and main battery mod 3 for the faster reload time because 38 seconds is a bit of a long time even for 16 inch guns, I'm sorry for 16 guns. And for the commander build, this is my Lepanto slash uh, Marco Polo captain. So I went with preventive maintenance, MLG, not, sorry, not MLG, well, I guess MLG loaders, that's what we can call the skill, but gun feeder, old uh, expert loader skill, MLG turrets, adrenaline rush, of course, Deadeye, superintendent, and concealment. Now, of course, Deadeye is leaving in 10 
4. But right now, it is going to be the optimum build for your Italian battleships. We don't know if Wargaming is going to buff the dispersion of Italian battleships, because I'm pretty sure they were designed with Deadeye in mind. But we'll see when that happens. However, again, it's the most optimum build for right now. If you're watching this in the future, I'll update you on the, on the build when that time comes. But this is what we're going to roll with for now. If this isn't available for you guys, I would say just go with a tank build. So, you know, go with uh, Fire Prevention instead of Deadeye. That would be the safe bet for what I'm going to do if, well, when Deadeye leaves. So now, her firing, well, her re reload time, that's survivability, not, not artillery. Reload time is 30, 33 seconds, a lot more of a workable reload time. Her 180 time is 38 seconds with a turret, so still a pretty decent turning rate on her turrets. And her concealment range is now 14 kilometers, which is quite good for tier 10 standards. Oh, this is without flags, too. So if we slap flags on here, not my recommended flags. Oh, come on, game. There we go. And the detonation flag, because exploding randomly is not fun. All right, so now her maximum speed is... 31.1 knots. Oh, also note the detection range is, of course, with the uh, the camouflage equipped. I did go ahead and pick up the permanent camouflage for the Colum Colombo. So that does give you a little bit, little bit of boost to your concealment as well. All right, that's it for the port section. I'm going to go ahead and hop into battle with her, and I'll see you guys there. Hello, good people of YouTube. Voice over Mountbatten here. And first off, something I forgot to mention in port is that the rear turrets on the Columbo are 360 degree turrets, meaning that they just spin around 360. They don't have to swing from one side of the ship to the other side of the ship like every other tier 10 battleship's turrets. And that is a fantastic feature. You never realize how handy that is until you got it on your ship. And man, it's it's great for turret angles and for, well, not showing broadside when you may need to get your full broadside on target because the turret's never that far away from whatever it is you're aiming at. So that's great right there. So the Columbo, how is she? She's quite good, actually. And this is pretty much what I expected to happen with the Italian battleships, which is exactly the same thing that happened with the Italian cruisers. The low tier ones aren't that great, but around tier 8 the line starts to pick up. The tier 9 is pretty good, then the tier 10 is really good, at least in my opinion. So, her accuracy, yes, it's very true that her accuracy is very much not there. And yes, right now she is dependent upon Deadeye to get good dispersion. However, in the games that I played with her, I've found that even when Deadeye isn't active, you are just throwing so many shells at the wall that it truly doesn't matter too much. Now, when you have Deadeye active and you get that boost to your dispersion, you can pull off some pretty amazing shots in the Columbo, including this one that should be playing right now. Yeah, I just removed all that Talon's health in one salvo with sap. That's crazy. It's it it's that good when the sap uh, when when the dead eye kicks in and when most of the shells connect. So you can imagine why they really can't let 16 sap shells constantly connect to your target because that would be broken at that point. But it can happen every now and then when RNG allows it. And the 33 second reload time with the reload module isn't that bad. It's it's only 3 seconds longer than your standard reload time. So it doesn't feel too long. But if you do want more range, you're going to have to settle for the 38 second reload time. Which again is understandable with the sap shells. So all in all, the guns are pretty good. Now, you do get that wonky salvo every now and then that of course every battleship gets. 
when RNG is telling you to go take a hike and hike and the shells go all over the place but again you've got 16 shells so you're likely going to hit a shell or two on your target and with sap that does mean a decent amount of damage even when only one or two shells were connecting with the Colombo, just like with the Lepanto, I was still doing around 8k damage when only one or two shells would connect, which is a decent chunk of damage. But with the most salvos that I was finding, at least again most salvos, I was doing about 10 to 12k damage on average. If I would manage to hit the superstructure or the part of the ship that I was actually aiming at, like 15, 16, 17, 18k would happen and some 22k salvos also happen too by hitting the superstructure or the upper belt or the bow or the stern because again if you know where to aim with sap you can really aim there and ensure that you are doing a good chunk of damage and that's what you need to be doing with sap so if you were a person who's played a lot of the italian battleships when they were in early release and you know where to aim the ship's going to be great for you. It's definitely not a ship that you can free XP through and just pick up and do fantastic and you need to know where to aim. If you want to know where to aim, go look at my Sap Doesn't Suck video. I explained it all there very, very well. Basically, again, lightly armored portions of the ship, bow, upper belt, um, superstructure, and stern. And again, only upper belt on some ships that have a thin upper belt th that your Sap can get through. Other than that, you want to be loading AP. But those other cases are only when you have the flat broadside of the ship in the other cases you are going to want to have sap loaded up now the AP is very good it's that Italian good penetration hot moving AP if you played Roma you know what I'm talking about so when you do have the opportunity to use it you should use it but the opportunity to use it is only when you can ensure you're going to get citadels in every other case, you're going to want to use your sap because you'll get better damage out of it. So main battery guns, they're great. The sap's good, the AP's good, the dispersion isn't that great, but again, throwing 16 shells at the target kind of makes up for that. So the armor, how is it? Well, the armor's actually pretty good, and I do believe that is why she only has 89,000 hit points instead of your normal tier 10 amount, which is normally roughly above 90,000, sometimes a little over 100,000. So she has slightly low HP for her tier, but the armor is very good, especially with those 360 turrets in the back. You don't have to swing your ship from one side to the other to try and get your rear guns on target when you're bowing to a target. So she's got that icebreaker bow, and... The, I mean, the Citadel armor, I didn't get Citadel too much. The only couple times that it happened was with, like, a uh, Yami from range, and I wasn't watching, and I just ate crap. Um, but I wasn't getting blapped unexpectedly. Again, if you've played the Lepanto and the Roma or the Vittorio, it's more of that. Except with, you know, it's got that wraparound icebreaker bow instead of just the little slat that goes up about halfway of the ship. But it's a pretty tough ship. It is. Um, HE spam, I mean, HE spam to HE spam doesn't really matter your armor, but with that 50mm deck plating, that's very nice because most DDs they're going to be falling somewhere in there with their shells. Um, but of course, if they hit your bow and they have IFHE, it'll go right through that bow deck plating. But I mean, again, a tough little ship definitely can hang in there, definitely very good for getting in close. And her torpedo protection, again, is very nice that you've got that 30% torpedo damage reduction. Most ships that are designed to get close, like the Germans, they don't have that great torpedo protection, but the, the Colombo here does. Um, AA, uh, I mean, AA is AA right now. It's not very reliable unless you, have, unless you have god tier AA. But again, like with the Lepanto, when I was sailing with another ship that had decent AA, we managed to make the CV pay for striking us, so it can do that at least. Now, what's very useful is her smoke screen consumable. That is great for either controlling the engagement, saying, you know, hey, I want to get out of here, pop your smoke, no radar ships around, great, just turn around and leave. Or, hey, I want to get a little bit closer before they detect me, pop your smoke. You'll be surprised the amount of people that won't realize a battleship sized smoke screen is chugging toward them at 30 knots until it's too late. It's hilarious it's pretty funny with the Paulo Emilio but that's just a DD sized smoke screen but when you got a Colombo that's spewing out a BB sized smoke screen and people still don't realize you're selling right toward them it's pretty funny and it can be a very useful tool so that's very good as well um, other than that she's well a bigger Lepanto with 
360 turrets in the in the rear, which in my book is a pretty good thing. Now this is probably the most I've used the spotter plane in like the past three or four months because of the range with the reload module, but it does work for me. I use a spotter plane early game to get those early game shots that extends my firing range to I believe around like 21, 22 kilometers, which is a very useful early game. But then I just use the smoke screen and the concealment to get a little bit closer and get the work that I need to, to get in the match. So, it's a pretty good boat. It is, of course, a tech line ship, so it's free. You don't have to pay anything for it. You just gotta, you know, do that old-fashioned grind. And she's a good ship, in my opinion. Is she's like, the best tier 10, the hottest new item? No. But she's definitely far from how crappy a lot of people were making her out to be before she even got released. Now, again, this is very heavily dependent upon Deadeye. We'll see what happens once they remove Deadeye and how the Italians function. I do think the Columba will be okay without it. We'll just be seeing less and less of those huge chunking salvos with the great alpha damage of the sap. Because she just has 16 inch guns and again when you're throwing that many shells at a target, a good chunk of them are gonna stick. But the rest of the line probably won't fare as well, especially from Victorio down. But again, we'll see what happens when it comes to that. But for now, before the removal of Deadeye, I do think the ship is worth the grind. It's a fun ship. Sap's a really, really powerful munition. And she's really, really, really good at dishing it out. A very tanky ship as well, especially if you know how to angle the armor and make use of those rear guns that give you great firing angles, especially from the front. Firing angles from the rear from a cutting position, she has pretty good turret angles in the front but obviously they're not as good as the 360 ones in the back but she can do it and she can do it pretty darn well but that is my first impressions for the new tier 10 italian battleship the cristoforo colombo let me know what you guys think in the comments down below you're planning on grinding up the line to get her let me know also let me know what do you want to see next do you want to see zf6 first impressions or you want to see um the felix schultz or do you want to see the emiliman so I can go ahead and get working toward one of those ships. Let me know in the comments down below. Okay guys, hope you have a wonderful Thursday. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We just passed 23,900 subs a few days ago and we're on our way to 25,000. We're very, very, very close to 24,000, which is absolutely awesome. And I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Wednesday. I'm sorry, Thursday. I hope to catch you guys in the next one.